let's talk when when we talk about the quarterback part and the continuity of the quarterback. What do you do at quarterback now? What do you do? You know, I would start Tim Boyle. That's I would start Tim Boyle because he's been here longer. Yeah, and I uh, he probably is the better passer. Hunley's a better athlete, has a better arm, because he can sling it. That, that is, he, it's, arm's not a problem for him. Uh, it's accuracy. It's playing in this offense. But I was thinking about this. And this is a hell of a challenge for Mike McDaniel, because first of all, he hasn't proven to me that he can coach in adversity. And let me tell you something ahead of time before it happens, okay? Don't you dare pick on Tim Boyle or Snoop Hundley. Both guys are at a disadvantage because of Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel puts Tua Tungabailoa constantly in disadvantages. Tua will put himself in a disadvantage, too. I've got to be fair also because he'll do stupid things that puts his body at risk, and I don't understand why. I really don't understand why. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation that I wish I could have with Tua face-to-face and ask him, what the fuck are you doing, bro? But anyway, that's a, that's a whole other ball game. I'm sure I'll never have that conversation with him. Anyway, um, I'm thinking about this. I was going through this last night, and I would start Tim Boyle, no doubt about it, between the two guys. But there's a problem. They run an RPO-type offense. Tim Boyle is a pure drop back passer i was talking to some guy from the lions yesterday uh I, I know a couple of scouts at the lions and um one of the guys was telling me that boyle doesn't do rpos he is straight drop back so he's not really going to be able to run some of the things mike may want to do some of the things that's in that offense from all the way back to san fran and you know, they did draft Trey Lance, right? So you, you wanted an active guy, right? You don't necessarily run RPOs with Purdy, but you know what I'm saying? But you could with Trey Lance, right? You can with Jordan Love, right? And there's Matt Lefleur, same tree, right? So you have some of these elements, because I was talking with the scout yesterday about this. And and so he kind of enlightened me on this sense that that it would be more of a challenge for McDaniel to then coach up a pure drop back offense. But if you have the RPO element to it, that's where you start Snoop Hundley. So Snoop's been here a couple of weeks. They probably can create certain packages for him. He can't run this offense. He's not a drop back passer. See, these two guys are completely different. This is like effed up. Like it's really effed up because you 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 really can't get a quarterback. You're not going to find another guy like Tua uh, uh, out in the street or something like that. But even to get close to it, it's it's almost impossible. It's somebody else that's already like starting somewhere else that you can might might be able to do that kind of stuff. But you're to find it on the street, it's hard. So you kind of have two guys that are on different levels, whereas Boyle's going to be the better pocket passer, but Snoop is going to be the better athlete, right? And he can also make throws with his arm that definitely Boyle cannot make. So how do you coach this up? And I think both guys are going to be at a major disadvantage. So if they play terrible, okay, but I kind of get the feeling that maybe it's more Snoop than it is Tim because then you can add the RPO element to it. So you can add his legs to it. So if Tim Boyle is limited in just passing and he's not a great passer, ugh, ugly, 
But he, he, I know he had that one pass to John that was nice. Every dog has his day. But if he doesn't pass well, where do you go from there? And now you're screwed and you made the whole game plan around him and you practiced all week. And then now you got to go to Snoop with limited practice time. So Tim Boyle already knows what he knows. So you're better off trying to lean more to Snoop and use the RPO element because if Snoop sucks passing, which that could be the case, at least you can use his legs. And if things do break down because you can't make us remember, are we going to expect Tim Boyle to read and react in two seconds, 2.5 seconds like Tua does? Probably not. Are you going to expect uh, Snoop Huntley to react in two, 2.5 seconds? Hell no! Are you following me on this? You have to really understand everything going on and the skill sets of each guy. So this creates like a problem for the coach. That's why I told you that maybe Snoop comes in more like a wildcat guy. But in this case, if you want to kind of add the RPO element, then you bring in Snoop Huntley. So if you start Snoop Huntley, which could be the case, now at least you can create packages and use his legs. But do not freak out if he's not a great, an accurate passer, a timely passer. You know, that's, I haven't, I haven't seen enough of Hundley, but what I saw from the Ravens, I mean, there's a reason why the guy was in the practice squad. You know. Okay. Whatever. I know he's a local kid. He's, I don't know him from Adam. He's probably a nice kid. I have no idea. But from what I've seen, he can't play in this offense. He's not accurate enough. He's not the kind of passer in this offense. And he's never going to be anything like Tua. You can forget about that shit. But I would start Tim Boyle. But the problem is we have a very limited head coach. And as the scout pointed out to me, hey, you know, the other guy knows the RPO stuff, and that's kind of what we what we see there in Detroit here in our division and what they were going to try to do in San Francisco. So is that maybe more? And I was like, yeah, maybe that, that could be the that could be the case. Just throwing it out there. I personally would start Boyle, but I could see where Snoop Huntley becomes the guy, the 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 experiment this week, because you could still go back to Boyle. But the other way around doesn't help because then Snoop doesn't have practice, doesn't have playing time. So it puts him behind the eight ball if you need him in game day on, on Monday. You understand what I'm saying? Plus, you have the Monday, so you have an extra day and everything to get him acclimated and create packages for him because Snoop Hundley will not know the – he can't know the offense, dude. He's only been here a couple of weeks, and he can't play in this offense. So they'll have certain packages that they're going to run. High, they'll cut half the field for him, give him high-low options, those kind of things. It's kind of what they'll do. They're not going to give him the whole field so you can start scanning and all that kind of shit. Are you crazy, dude? They're not going to do that. That's that's not going to happen. Okay, so to me, if you start Snoop, which, you know, seems logical when you when I explain it to you the way I explained it to you and give you like substance behind it, not just throw it out there and say, oh, well, I, you know, oh, I think Tim Boyle's going to start. Oh, I think Hunley's going to start. Well, I give you the reasons why you start one or start the other. And then how it affects what you're doing all over the league because I have to go by what this tree does everywhere else. You know what I'm saying? This is the Big O Show.